Uh, we can trace what happens to the potential energy as the, the atoms of the molecules move, okay? They, they, they move towards each other and move away from each other, so bonds get broken, bonds get formed. We can trace the potential energy, and typically what happens is as the reaction progresses, this is called the reaction coordinate, that's just, uh, that's just a generic, our generic way of represent, uh, uh, representing what's the, the progress of the reaction. Okay, so the changes in the in the in the in the uh, relative locations of your atoms. Okay, as the reaction progresses, typically your potential energy is going to rise. Okay, it reaches a, at the highest point. It's okay. It, it, you have what is called a transition state. Okay, and then it drops. It may drop below the original potential energy. In that case you have what's called an exothermic reaction. This delta H here is going to be a negative number. Or it might, it's also possible, okay, that it, it would uh, fall to a higher level compared to the original uh, potential energy. And so this delta H here would be positive and you would have an endothermic step. Okay, so this Illustration right here would be an endothermic. If I were to do something like this, that would be an exothermic step. Okay, so this is what we call the potential energy profile for an elementary step. Okay, it goes through uh, maximum and then it goes back down. So the minimum energy that you, your reactants need to be able to get to the transition state is called your energy of activation. Okay, now, because reactions happen as a result of collisions, it's possible for your product molecules to get together and get back and form the reactants, right? So your products, imagine the reaction going in reverse, okay? Then if the reaction goes back, the products go back to your transition state, the minimum energy they need, that would be the energy of activation for the reverse process, okay? So, uh, Typically, a mechanism will involve a transition state where your reactant, bond, reactant bonds are partially broken and product bonds are partially formed. The energy of activation, okay, the energy of activation that we have here, which we are showing here, will typically be less than the energy needed to, do, to break the bonds, okay, because while you're forming your transition state, as your atoms change their positions relative to each other, that could, uh, you could actually be, ch you could be changing the potential energy of the entire system. So what you would normally need to break a bond, the en that energy might be more that uh, uh, you, you'd have, let's see, you'd require less, okay, to get to the transition state than the energy just to break that bond. 